This is Larry Lawton, and he's an ex-jewel thief. Larry's a former career criminal, once considered the biggest jewel thief in the United States. Larry Nasser goes to federal prison as a Jomo. Here's what's gonna happen. Larry Nasser gets assaulted in Coleman Federal Prison as a Jomo. Does that happen? Is it real? Why is it happening more? Well, let me get into first how a person as a Chomo gets exposed. First of all, when you go to a federal prison, you don't get to bring your paperwork. You can't even say I'm a good guy or a bad guy. That's not allowed. When you get to the prison you're gonna go to, you are not allowed to bring any paperwork. If you need legal paperwork, obviously you can take your own legal work because you're working on your case. That's a normal. But what happens is you can't bring paperwork. So somebody can't pull you on the yards. Hey, let me see your paperwork. That can't be done. Now, people do get exposed on federal prison yards. In fact, I did it. People who do legal work know how to get into the system and actually pull a person's what they call a docket sheet. What happens with the docket sheet? I could tell you everything and every status conference, what the charges are you were charged with. If you got what they call a 5K1, which is a uh, pre-sentencing uh, downward departure, usually for ratting. Could be other things, it's called a 5K1. If it's a post conviction and a post sentencing, it's a rule 35. Now, in the paperwork, a person who gets exposed for whatever they did, whether it's a rat or the chomo, here's what happens. A person, like if you're a young person, you want to jump in a car. It could be a different gang. It could be a different group in that prison. If you were from North Carolina and they were North Carolina boys and you wanted to hang with those guys, uh, they might call you up and, they, hey, listen, what are you in for? We want to see some paperwork. Or the shot caller, which a shot caller in prison is the dude who runs that group. That shot caller might come up to me, a guy like me, and say, hey, last, you pull this guy's jacket. Meaning, I would get into the legal system. And I did that by way of lawyers, attorneys, that I knew on the street. Now, getting legal work is not illegal to get in prison. It's your paperwork, we can ask for it, and it'll come to you, and then you can give it to us, because you have a legal right. It's a guaranteed right. You have to be able to do your own paperwork or your own appeals and stuff of that nature. So I would get that guy's paperwork and I did it a whole bunch of ways. So once I get that paperwork in, I would go to that shot caller, and say, hey, listen, this is what the guy's in for. He's a chomo. Now, let me explain chomos. Chomos are a different breed. There are young kids who could come to prison. Maybe he's 21 years old. And you know, they mess around with a 17 year old. Well, that's against the law. It's against the federal law, but we didn't care. What I say we is the inmate population are not looking at a young guy who's 21, 22, you know, messing around with a girl who's 17 years old. They don't care. We didn't care. Now, under the federal code, so the U.S. code, there'll be a charge number for a federal code for a person who messes around with someone who's under 12 or 13, 12, and the, and the works on that. Now, when that happens, there is no excuse no matter who you are, no matter what age you are. Obviously, if you have a charge like that, you are gonna be hit on that yard, especially the penitentiaries where Larry Nassau went. Now, Larry Nassau, he was stabbed 10 times, twice in the neck, twice in the uh, back, and six times in the chest, which indicates to me that he was probably hit by more than one guy. That could be, you know, a hit for some reason. And now, a hit could be not just because he's a chomo. A hit could come because maybe Larry Nassau owed somebody money. Maybe they tried to shake Larry Nasser down and he didn't pay. There's a number of reasons why a person might get hit in prison. Now, a person of Larry Nasser's status, this is a man who was a doctor who was treating and doing the exams for Olympic athletes. I mean, uh, Simone Biles, greatest gymnast that ever lived, and all of those young people who were, who were getting examined and being you know, abused by this guy. Now, this guy, this is, this is a well, well-known case. Now, Larry Nassar was convicted in 2018, and he's been in prison, I think, since 2019. He's been abused, uh, assaulted already. He was in prison a few months and he was assaulted, I think six weeks, and that's gonna happen. Now, a person of that stature or that celebrity status, people are gonna know who he is. So you don't even have to pull paperwork. So it surprised me that it didn't happen quicker. A lot of people who get hit like that, whether it's a Whitey Bulger or you know, something like that, they got hit 12 hours on the yard. That's it, 12 hours, done, killed. Tried to cut his tongue out, jabbed his eyes out with shanks. Well, they shanked 
Larry Nassau, 10 times, six in the chest, two in the back, two in the neck. So they're trying to kill him. You know, there are stab wounds that you don't get, you don't die, obviously, most of them. He has a collapsed lung. He is in stable condition at, at this point right now. And this happened in Coleman uh, Penitentiary, right here in Central Florida, near Lakeland. I was at that facility. I was in Coleman Complex. So he was hit at this complex, which is the biggest federal complex in the United States. It's the biggest prison in the United States. I don't mean, I think uh, Angola has more inmates. I am talking about as a federal system, there's 10,000 inmates, approximately 10,000 inmates at that facility. There's five different facilities and each one is carrying 1,500, 1,200, maybe a little bit more uh, uh, inmates. So it's a very big facility. Uh, that has four war, five wardens and an overseeing warden. So they are understaffed, like most federal prisons and all prisons are understaffed. So what happens now? Larry Nassa, is his family gonna sue? Is he uh, gonna be, he's definitely not going back to that facility, no matter what. He will come back to the facility. He has to. He has to come back to that facility and then get processed out of the facility. He'll come back to the facility. He will go into the hole, which is called the SHU, Special Housing Unit. He will be in protective custody in that facility. And that's in a lone cell. And it's called administrative detention. If you go to the hole or SHU for fighting or doing something, you're going what they call disciplinary segregation. And if you're going in there because you're a rat or you're, you're somebody who just is scared, you go into protective custody or administrative shoe. Same exact thing, but you might get a few more items that you're allowed to have, like a radio or something of that nature in the hole. Now, it's gonna take a long time for him to process this guy. This guy won't leave this facility for approximately a year. First thing he's got, he's got to mend, uh, if he even mends, because I know that medical care stinks. It's just garbage in the Federal Bureau of Prisons. So he's going to mend, suppose he's on the outside hospital or he's back already. I'm not sure exactly. This happened Sunday. It just happened a couple of days ago. And uh, Larry Nassar is, uh, he's, he's getting to that age. He's 59 years old. So he is younger than I am and he's not built for a penitentiary. Not that any chomo is built for uh, any penitentiary because they don't care how big you are how bad you are, you will be hit on a yard. Because you gotta understand something. Inmates or convicts, especially guys like myself, we don't like those kind of people. Here's why, we have kids. You know, when I went to prison, I had a 15 month old daughter and a seven year old son. My biggest fear when I went to prison is something happened to my children. So, I mean, we're normal people. And I hate to say, you know, that's the code of the convict crime. You know, you're a robber, you're this. Trust me, a chomo or someone who take, you know, uses elderly people. We all have mothers. We all have uh, elderly, maybe parents or you know, grandparents or whatever it is. And we don't want to see those guys, uh, our parents hurt. So we look at that prison like, you want to be a convict, do the right thing. Doing a crime that's, I hate to say honorable crime, because we're, listen, I don't want anybody doing crime. That, that's fact. But thinking more about Larry Nasser, He's never getting out. He's got a 60 year sentence. He got another 40 to 125 years in the state of Michigan, but they ran the time concurrently, which means, you know, it's exactly uh, what it means. They run it together, consecutive or concurrently. If they say, okay, you got a uh, consecutive sentence, that means you have to do all that time and then do enough. Well, it doesn't matter in this guy's case. This guy's never getting out of prison and uh, he shouldn't get out of prison. When they found a child pornography on his uh, computer and all the testimonies, everything that he did, and he admitted to doing it then, uh, this guy's a creep of the worst degree. This is the kind of guy that I would sit back and have a cup of coffee and watch the buffer machine drop on his head. That's just the way I am. I, I hate to be hard like that, but I don't, I don't believe in that. That's the, I hate to say that. Uh, I don't believe in any crime now, but I don't believe that this is not even Oh, just like you have in prison, you have Jared, the guy from Subway. Uh, he's not probably having a good time in prison. No chomo is, especially a person who has celebrity status, whether they're getting shaken down where they'll get two guys. And let me, let me give you a quick a rundown of how a shakedown works. One guy befriends him and then he's really in on the shakedown. And then they have some gang or group go up to him and and say they're gonna kill him if they don't give him $300 a week, $400 a week. And this guy's like, I don't got the money, what I did, all my money went to lawyers and this. Now the friend who's really not the friend knows what he can afford and says to the guy, listen, I'll talk to those guys. I'll cover you, I'll be your protector. 
But what I want you to do is make sure you give them that 250 a week or 350, 300 a week. So what happens is, is that supposedly protect him. But then he's paying, he's paying 400 a week until they want, until they're done. Until another inmate comes who's a, a bad person and says, you know, this guy's a piece of shit. I don't give a shit what we're making off this guy, he's done. And that happens as well. So at this time, chomos are not a person that is, you know, are gonna get any kind of protection or any kind of sympathy. And even from the guards, you know, a lot of people think, oh, well, why don't the guards protect them? Here's why the guards don't protect them. Because the guards are regular people who have young children maybe at home, and they're looking and saying, you know, I gotta live in this place, this guy, and they can go look at his record. See, a guard could go in the back office, in the case manager's office or counsel's office, and look these people up. And we used to have a guard that would do that and tell us, hey, listen, this guy's no good. We had guards that did that. Now, they would do that, and we would then say, well, you know, we'd make the decision either to hit the guy or get rid of him or whatever. I never seen him not get hit by any gang that ever called, you know, asked me to pull the paperwork and find out somebody who they are, and they were done. So now, this guy, Larry Nassar, or Jared, or anybody else who is a celebrity is either being shaken down and then hit, or hit just because they're piece of garbage, they're known already. But actual hitting, or actually attacks or assaults on chomos in federal prison. And federal prison, I want to uh, get out, is very common. Federal prison system is terrible. And a lot of people will say, oh, I'd rather go to the feds than I'd rather go to the state. That's not true, actually. People, when you get to the maximum securities, no, maximum security federal prison has, first of all, there's no time. You, there's no parole, because there's no state. And they're all murderers. They're drug kingpins. They're hitmen. They're mafia guys. They're armed robbers like myself. There's guys that did a lot of violence in their life in a maximum security prison. States are like that, too, but states, you can also maneuver a little bit better with states, because you might know someone from that state area. You might have went to college or somebody went to school with this guy or that guy. And before you know it, you got it in easier than you do in the feds. See, the feds will ship you all over the country too. You know, they have a policy that they keep a person 500 miles uh, to close to their house. Bullshit. Doesn't happen a lot. They, they ship you off anyway. They kept shipping me farther away from my home. They kept shipping me then to uh, uh, Yazoo, Mississippi, Forest City, Arkansas. They, they're sending me so many places. They wanted it. They, they didn't like me and the feds can do whatever they want. So don't ever get that, that misconception, oh, I'd rather be in the feds and say, no, you wouldn't. Listen, it, it, it's, it's a place that there's a lot of violence going on and the federal system has gotten worse and worse. And uh, I thought it would get better. Just listen to my video with uh, uh, Brad Cohen, the attorney uh, for Kodak Black, what he talks about the federal system. And in that video, he actually explains how bad it is where they sent Kodak Black, which is a, a penitentiary over in Big Sandy, which is a bad place as well. So. Just given the update, we will follow this case. We will find out what happens. But one food for thought, if the federal government doesn't release a video of what happened and who did this, then they're covering it up themselves. And I'll tell you why. Cameras are everywhere. This happened at 2.35 in the afternoon on a Sunday. It looks like it either happened what they call on the move or in between the move. So they should have a video this is a bright day. This is not in the cell. And if it is in the cell, they knew who came in that cell and came out of that cell. So that's number one. This is in Coleman, Florida, where they have the top, top equipment. I remember when Coleman, Florida Penitentiary was built. So they have the technology to know what's going on, but will they? I don't know. Uh, I think what's gonna happen is you're gonna find out that some people eventually charged in this case which they will charge you in federal prison if you get caught. But he didn't die, so that's another thing that's, that's okay, this guy didn't die. Whitey Bulger, they charged a guy named Freddie Geese uh, from Boston for killing him, and that guy was in the hole for four years, uh, waiting for the trial, and I think he's still up for trial. Uh, they will charge you, don't think they won't charge you. Obviously, if you have life sentences, who cares if they charge you? But I don't know what happened. You're gonna find out soon on this case, but I have to say, to end this video, I don't feel one bit of like, you know, oh, the poor guy or something. Nah, boom, he's done. It's a chomo, doesn't deserve it. What he did to those young people, he's paying for it. And, he's, and that's why I don't believe in the death penalty. People go, well, what about people who abuse people? What's gonna come is gonna come, and it's gonna come at a time they don't know it. That's worse. Have a great day, everybody. Please stay safe, don't go to prison. Like, subscribe, check out all my stuff on the website, the link's below. Have a great day. See you next time.